video continuing forward with the accounting cycle review, we're going to be focusing on journalizing and posting. So let's first talk about journalizing, and journalizing takes place in the journal, sometimes referred to as the general journal. This is a chronological record of all the transactions in the business. Um, so we're going to look at an example here. Stockholders invested $15,000 cash in the corporation in exchange for shares of stock. And they also purchased a computer equipment for $7,000 in cash. So let's look at what the journal entry would be for both of these um, separate transactions that actually happened both on September the 1st. So the first one, we received cash for part ownership in our company. And since we're a corporation, we issue stock to represent the ownership. So we received cash of $15,000, and the owner's claims on our assets has increased, so we credit common stock. And keep in mind the credit is always indented, both the amount and the title of the account. The second transaction was we purchased computer equipment for $7,000 in cash. So equipment, which is an asset, is increasing, so we debit equipment for $7,000, and we credit cash, which we are paying out. So cash is an asset going down, we credit cash. Once you've journalized a transaction, you then post that transaction to the ledger. And you can see it has um, really uh, two parts to it when you have a transaction where only two accounts are affected. Each one of those accounts has its own section in the ledger or its own T account. So you'll note here we're simply moving the information from the journal to the ledger. So if it was a debit to the account in the journal, it will be a debit to the account in the ledger. Also, you want to use references. So, for example, next to cash, you see the reference 101. That, re that represents the account number in the ledger. And if you notice the reference in the ledger, for example, for cash or common stock, the reference is J1. You'll notice that that, re that references, references us back to the general journal, page 1, where we can then find that journal transaction. So the idea here when we're journalizing and posting is to first make sure a transaction is actually happening. Once we've identified that a transaction has happened, we then have to figure out well, what accounts are affected. Then once we determine what accounts are affected, we have to determine how those accounts are affected. So is it an asset that's increasing? Is it an asset that's decreasing? Is it a liability that's increasing, a liability that's decreasing, etc.? So let's go through a few examples and see if we can analyze these transactions, figure out what accounts are affected. We're going to journalize them and then post them. So on October the 1st, stockholders invest $100,000 cash in an advertising venture to be known as Pioneer Advertising Agency, Inc. So again, we're journalizing the books of the company. So the company is receiving $100,000 in cash. Cash is an asset. So cash is going up and cash goes up with a debit. And they are also, um, the ownership claims on the assets is increasing. And so that's represented by common stock. And so common stock increases with a credit. So our journal entry would be a debit to cash and a credit to common stock for $100,000. Now once we have this journalized, we simply need to move it from the journal to the ledger. So again, we debited cash for $100,000, we credited common stock for $100,000. So we're simply going to move that information to the ledger and make the appropriate posting. So let's look at the next one. Pioneer Advertising purchases office equipment costing $50,000 by signing a three-month, 12%, $50,000 note payable. So it's important that when you're reading through these transactions, don't get bogged down by the three-month, 12%. Because that really isn't important in the, in the original transaction. That stuff is going to happen later on. So only, the only thing we're doing right now is journalizing the actual signing of the note and getting of the equipment. Okay, so we're receiving equipment, which is an asset. Assets are going up. Assets go up with debit. So we're going to debit equipment. And we're also signing a note saying, I owe you $50,000 and that is a liability when you owe someone money and that is going up so that's with a credit. So we would debit equipment, credit notes payable for $50,000. Then you simply again move that from the journal to the ledger 
So debit equipment for fifty thousand, credit notes payable for fifty thousand. Pioneer Advertising receives a $12,000 cash advance from KC, a client, for advertising services that are expected to be completed by December 31st. So again, the first thing we want to do is journalize. So see if you can journalize this one. Press pause. See if you can journalize the transaction and then post that information and then come back and we'll look at it together. So we being Pioneer Advertising, we are getting $12,000 in cash. So we're going to debit cash for $12,000. And it's for advertising services that we're expected to complete by December 31st. So we actually haven't earned it yet. So this is basically a service that we owe someone, which is a liability. And we call that unearned service revenue. So we're going to end up debiting cash for $12,000 and crediting that liability, unearned service revenue, something that we owe someone for $12,000. Then you're simply, again, going to move that from the journal to the ledger so we debited cash for $12,000, credited unearned service revenue for $12,000. So now our new balance in cash is $112,000. Let's look at the next one. On October the 3rd, Pioneer Advertising pays $9,000 office rent in cash for October. So again, press pause and let's try this one on our own. Okay, so hopefully you got a journal entry there and you post it to the, to the ledger. So now we're paying cash. So cash is going down. So we know cash is going to get credited for $9,000. And we're paying office rent. So our actually office, our rent expense is actually increasing here. So we're going to debit rent expense and credit cash for the $9,000. And then again, post that. Simply move it down to the ledger. We're going to credit cash for $9,000. And we're going to debit rent expense because that rent expense is increasing. Remember, your expense accounts are going to continually increase throughout the year until at the end of the year you're going to close those out um, and start a new year. On October the 4th, Pioneer Advertising pays $6,000 for a one-year insurance policy that will expire next year on September the 30th. So this is something we've paid in advance. Um, so again, we're paying out cash here, so cash is going down, so cash is going to get credited. And we're actually purchasing something that someone owes us. And in this case, it's insurance, one year of insurance. So that's a prepaid asset or prepaid insurance in this case. So assets are going up, the prepaid insurance would be debited, and cash is going down. So assets are going to up and down in this case. And then we're going to post that, simply moving it down to the ledger, so prepaid insurance got debited for $6,000, cash got credited for $6,000. October the 5th, Pioneer Advertising purchases for $25,000 on account an estimated three-month supply of advertising materials from Aero Supply. So in this case, it's very similar to a prepaid. Supplies are really like a prepaid, and they are an asset. So we're buying these supplies that will be used up over a three-month period. So we're going to debit supplies and we're going to credit accounts payable because it says that we purchased it on account. So cash did not change hands yet at this point. So supplies being an asset is going up. We're simply going to just move that from the journal to the ledger with a debit and accounts payable is getting credited. On October the 9th, Pioneer Advertising signs a contract with a local newspaper for advertising inserts or flyers to be distributed starting the last Sunday in November. Pioneer will start work on the content of the flyers in November. Payment of $7,000 is due following delivery of the Sunday papers containing the flyers. Now this one you have to be really careful because actually what's happened here is no transaction has occurred. There's only an agreement for something to happen in the future. So because there is no transaction there's no journal entry or posting needed. On October the 20th, Pioneer Advertising's Board of Directors declares and pays a $5,000 cash dividend to stockholders. So this one can actually go a couple of different ways depending on the company that you're working for. But the way I'll demonstrate it here is we're going to debit dividends for $5,000 and credit cash for $5,000. 
Now, some companies don't use a dividends account at all. They would simply debit retained earnings because remember, when you close dividends at the end of the year, it simply reduces your retained earnings. So if you forego the use of a dividends account, it's simply going to, your retained earnings will already represent the amount paid out in dividends at the end of the year. Okay, so if you don't see a dividends account, it's not a bad thing. They're just debiting retained earnings when dividends are declared and paid. And then we'd simply move that down to the T account. So we're debiting dividends for 5,000, crediting cash for 5,000. On October the 26th, employees are paid every four weeks. The total payroll is $2,000 per day. The pay period ended on Friday, October 26th, with salaries and wages of $40,000 being paid. Okay, so we are paying salaries and the amount is $40,000 that's being paid. So we are going to debit salaries and wages expense for $40,000 and credit cash for $40,000. So now that we've got our journal entry, again, we simply move that from the journal to the ledger. So we're going to debit salaries and wages expense for the $40,000, credit cash for $40,000. On October 31st, Pioneer Advertising receives $28,000 in cash and bills Copa Company $72,000 for advertising services of $100,000 performed in October. So this is going to be an example of a compound entry where we're actually receiving cash, which is partial payment for something that we have performed. So we're getting cash of $28,000 and they still owe us $72,000 for revenues that we have already earned. So we are going to debit cash for $28,000. They owe us money, which is an account receivable for $72,000. And we've earned the entire amount, which is service revenue of $100,000. And then we're going to post that journal entry into the T accounts. So a debit to cash, a debit to accounts receivable, and a credit to service revenue. So we find that our total amount in cash now, after all those transactions, is $80,000. Now, as we've mentioned earlier, once we have all of our accounts or our transactions journalized and then posted to the ledger, at the end of the period, we want to take all those T accounts and all the ones with debit balances, we want to add those up, and all of the ones with credit balances, add those up, and that number should be the same. And we call that a trial balance. Okay, so you can see an example here for Pioneer Advertising. This is their trial balance. You can see our cash balance there that we just carried over to the trial balance. Our accounts receivable there of 72000 as well as the other accounts that we had. All the debits in one column, all the credit. This is not a T account. This is not a balance sheet. It's just a trial balance. We're just making sure that all the accounts with debit balances equal all the accounts with credit balances. So in this case, $287,000, and it equaled. So we're happy. However, always remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that we've done everything correctly. All this tells us is that our debits equal our credits.